One of the things that you'll find in Scripture, and there's wisdom in it, which is why the wise Solomon, Shlomo, says things more than once. So does Yahweh say things more than once because we're slow and we need to hear things more than once. And so Solomon is telling us here in chapter 4, and he's going to hit it again with more detail and slightly different angles, the idea of what our mouth is doing and what our feet are doing and what we're doing and where our eyes are going and what we're thinking about, etc., Incline your ear to my understanding. So now he's saying, look, and this is hard for us. He's saying, I know more than you do. Our pride and ego doesn't like that. Our vanity doesn't like that. He's saying, look, my son, listen to my wisdom and my understanding. Incline your ear to it. That's our active participation is that we incline. We've talked about this in many parts. You must actively listen See, Solomon's already writing to those that should know what's going on in places like Deuteronomy. And then we're going to read in Jeremiah and in Amos and even in Revelation to understand this Wormwood thing. But from the, not just understanding it from the, a word study point of view, but from how it fits into why is he talking about it here in the context of this woman and comparing wisdom and this foolishness and getting a contrast. What does Wormwood have to do with it? So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 29. The reason to do all this is because it's a burdensome, awful law that's just going to ruin your life. That even your forefathers couldn't handle, blah, blah, blah. No, he says, do them so that you prosper in all that you do. So this is why we say often that the Torah observant, the covenant keeping, that, well, you know, we should almost just change it to covenant keeping. Covenant keeping is designed to do three things. We used to say the Torah is designed to do three things. Well, actually, covenant keeping includes Torah observance. It's designed to do three things. So he's saying it's not just with those who are here. But it doesn't say that those in the future are making a different covenant. They may be renewing this covenant, but it doesn't say they're making a different covenant. He says this covenant is made not with just you alone, but with those that are standing here as well as those that are not here with us today. And every curse that is written in this book shall settle on him, and Yahweh shall blot out his name from under the heavens. So he considers this thing that leads to bitterness and wormwood that serious. And the reason bitterness, I think, is involved there is because a lot of times we switch over to this other, more appealing way of doing things because the things that Yah says somehow cause the bitterness in us. So I'm not saying that, oh, that people that are doing things against Torah, they're all getting curses and all these things and whatever, and they're all done and written off. It doesn't say that. What brings the curses are those, he says, all the curses of the covenant that are written. So it's for people that are covenant, uh, covenanted that now break covenant that bring all this. Because we see also a lot of people out there, oh, a hurricane comes and it hurts New Orleans. So there are people out there saying, oh, they're, because they're all sinners. There were some pastors that said that. No, the curses of this book are brought upon those who break covenant. So Wormwood is connected to breaking covenant and being tempted and being drawn somewhere else. Because remember, you already came into covenant because you were impressed with the relationship that Yah offered you, but now you found something else tempting you. Something else seems sweeter or better or more appealing than what you had. Because remember, you guys, where a lot of you had nothing before he called you out of nothing. So now you're in covenant, but what, what is there out there that can, can draw you into something else? Or a twisted, altered, perverted version of this. Perverted, I'm not talking sexual, I'm talking about not being the way he said it. Adjusted a little off left or adjusted a little off right? And actually, I'm not going to go much further, but just the beginning of verse 17. Thus said Yahweh host, discern. <laughs> discern. You know, use discernment. Wake up. Pay attention. Make better choices. Where is your discernment, people?